is when we seek knowledge so that we can be connected to truth, so that we can be disconnected from what is false, from what is not real, from illusion, from the traps of shaitan, from anything that is not in line with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with his truths, with his path, with what he wants for us. And so seeking knowledge is important, but on the path of change, on the path of, um, you know, you know, transforming our lives on the path of empowering ourselves spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically, we often miss a really crucial component, which is, you know, unburdening ourselves of that which is not true. Unpacking that which we carry that does not serve us. You know, unlayering things that we added on that did not belong to us, nor did it serve our soul's path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so part of the journey of change and transformation and empowerment and spiritual growth is always evaluating whether what we, what motivates our actions, what the belief systems that we have, our values, you know, evaluating whether those things, number one, are true, you know, are they rooted in, in fact, in, in anything that is really real, you know, and I'll give you, I'll give you an example of that in a second, but whether they are true and whether they are they serve they're pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they 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 serve our path to him and whether they are good for us spiritually mentally emotionally um holistically right and so we always have to ask ourselves you know what are these uh beliefs and values and thoughts that are motivating my life and my actions because they are whether we are aware of them or not our belief systems our thoughts the way that we think about ourselves the way that we think about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the way that we think about our very experience human experience in this world our path um it it really impacts the way the actions that we put forth in this world and the way that we act and so just because we're not aware of something doesn't mean that it's not impacting the way that we engage with the world. And so when we, when we evaluate, you know, the growth that we want to make, we always have to ask ourselves, you know, well, you know, these thoughts, these beliefs, these values that I have, are they rooted in, in anything that is real, right? Or where did I acquire them from? So when I do therapy with clients, one of the things that we talk about, especially if I'm doing, um, well, I use CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy a lot. And what I do with clients um, who have basically like, you know, whether they've been through trauma, or whether they've been through abuse, or even whether they're just they're trying to make certain changes in their lives and they feel like they're hit, they keep getting, they keep hitting barriers or blockages. We have to evaluate what are the thoughts they have about their path themselves, their creator, their experiences. And we lay out these thoughts, you know, and we say, well, okay, what about that thought? You know, where did you come up with this belief that you're not worthy of, of, of um, success? Or where did you come up with this belief that, um, that bad things are always going to happen to you. So you have to, we have to kind of pick apart these thoughts that are motivating the client's actions day in and day out and, a, and ask deeper questions, you know? So what evidence, one question we like to ask is what evidence do you have to support that thought? You know, what evidence do you have to support the fact that you're not worthy of, um, of goodness or, or success or, or that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is out to punish you? You know, so these thoughts, um, you know, many people carry all different kinds of thoughts and beliefs that really aren't serving their path. And, you know, the times that they really come up, and I think this is, this is uh, the beauty of the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala designed our experiences, is that oftentimes we don't face the truth of the way that we think and the way that we feel and the way that we, um, our beliefs about Allah and ourselves and the world until we are hit with a test until we are hit with experiences that are difficult, until we go through, um, you know, experiences that really take us out of our comfort zones, that really um, maybe even break our hearts or challenge us to a degree we've never been challenged. That's unless we've been through things that tested us, that um, unless we've been through things like that, do we really, you know, have the opportunity to, evaluate the things that we have been believing. And this is the beauty of tests. And in fact, this is one of the, per, the um, 
basically one of the purposes of tests, right, is that they are there to introduce us to what is true. And we know this from the Quran, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says um, in Surah Al-Ankabut, chapter 29, verses uh, 2 to 3, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, do people think that they will be left alone because they say we believe and will not be tested? And we indeed tested those who were before them. And Allah will certainly make it known uh, those who are true and will certainly make it known the falsehood of those who are liars. And then in parentheses, although Allah knows all that before putting them to test. So there is, um, there is, you know, a concept when discussing tests in the Quran that really is very much associated with connecting us to truth, right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows you know, his servants. He knows his creation. So why would he need to test us? It's for us, right? So we may know what is true. See, when, when you are going through a test, when you are going through struggles, whether they are emotional, whether they are mental, whether they, you know, whether they're psychological, whether they're spiritual struggles, whether they're financial, whatever, whatever, you know, um, kind of test it is, when you are tested, you cannot hold on to what is false to help you. Right? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us an example of this in the Quran where he talks about the people who um, are on a boat and when there's a storm, they call upon Allah and they, work, they basically believe in him. But after the storm passes, they go back to their, their ways, right? But why is it that when they are in a test, do they, does, their, does their tawheed become so clear? Because when you are struggling, when you are tested, you cannot hold on to what is false. What is false will not help you. And so the sharp reality of what is real, uh, the reality of what is real becomes very sharp. Your vision of that becomes very sharp. And that's the nature of tests is it makes you realize I can't hold on to all the things I've been carrying to help me anymore. And what comes to the surface is only what is real and what is true. And this is the nature of, of, of struggles. And so why? So that we could learn what is true and unlearn what is not true. And this is a path of truth. And so one of the things we often disconnect or miss when we practice Islam is that we forget this concept of this is ultimately a path of me connecting and prioritizing truth every step of the way. Meaning that Everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent down through the Quran and through the teachings of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is about connecting this heart to truth, right? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, tells us this in the Quran. I just want to share with you some verses where, um, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, several occasions, he, he tells us that we have sent, basically what he has sent, uh, you know, is the truth. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in Surah Az-Zumar, verse 41, Verily we have sent down to you um, the book for mankind in truth. So whoever accepts guidance, it is only for his own self. And whoever goes astray, he goes astray only for his own loss. And you, he's talking to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu in this verse, and you are not a trustee uh, or disposer of affairs over them. You're not a wakil over them, basically. You're not a keeper over them. And in another verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, God has said, we, has, we, we sent down the Quran with the truth, and with the truth it has come down, and we have not sent you, and he's talking to Prophet Muhammad as, in this verse as well, we have not sent you except as a bringer of good tidings and a warning. This is chapter 17, verse 105. In another verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and unto you we have revealed the scripture with the truth, confirming whatever scripture was before it, and a watcher over it. And then in another verse in chapter 43, verse 78, we have brought you the truth, and, but most of you despise it. So there's a constant reiteration of the fact that what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent us is the truth. And that also he is the truth. So many, many verses are centered around this concept of truth. First of all, Allah tells us in the Quran that he is the truth. He is al-haq. That is one of his names. He has named himself the truth, right? Then he also tells us that he is truthful. And I want you to think about this. You know, in any loving relationship, the, you know, two people in a relationship want the other to know that what they, when they speak to them, that they are being truthful. That is a key component of a healthy relationship, honesty, right? And it's very important for, for those two people to know that the other person is being truthful with them. And in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually tells us 
that he is being truthful with us. And it's it, like, does Allah need to do that? Does Allah need to, um, to reiterate to us that what he is saying is true? But that is from his love and mercy because he, this, this relationship is about building a loving relationship with Allah. And this path is about building you know, a loving relationship with, with Allah and growing in that love with God. And so it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants that for us. So he keeps confirming to us that what I'm telling you is true. And so one of the verse, uh, a few verses in, in chapter three, verse uh, 95, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah speaks the truth. In chapter 33, verse 4, Allah says, and Allah speaks the truth and he shows the way. Chapter 38, verse 84, uh, this is the truth. And in another translation, it's this is my oath and I speak only the truth. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is confirming to you that I'm speaking the truth. What I'm bringing to you is true and I'm only telling you the truth. In another verse, chapter 10, verse 55, surely Allah's promise is true. In chapter 4, verse 122, it is Allah's promise in truth. And who is more truthful in word than Allah? Just look at that love and that rahmah, right? And that mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala constantly telling us that he is the truth. What I have sent you is the truth. And I'm speaking to you in, tr in truth. And my promises are truth. You know, and, what, and who is more truthful in word than, than me? Basically, that's what he's saying, right? So... This is, you know, um, something to really remember all the time because we can often forget, we can often treat Islam as like this, um, you know, this entity, right? That like, I have to just, um, it's, it's, it's hard to kind of explain, but I find that sometimes people treat Islam like, you know, this box that they're in, right? And so, and it becomes almost like um, something that they are rather than something that they are experiencing, and so it becomes more about obligations and checking off certain things I have to do, but not about what the foundation of it is, which is building a loving relationship with the one who designed us and the one who created us. And so, and so we forget that truth. And so when we understand that truth and love is the foundation of everything that God has sent us, we look at it differently. Then we understand that he sent he sent Islam as a, uh, you know, as, as truth, as guidance. He sent the Quran and the teachings of Prophet Muhammad as guidance. Why? Because truth is the most powerful thing you can have in life. You know, the, you know they even, the quote, the truth will set you free. That is a quote that's said by Muslim, not just Muslims, non-Muslims, right? It's, it's a reality because truth is liberation. Falsehood traps you. Falsehood captivates you. Falsehood keeps you imprisoned. Truth liberates people. And this is, this, is a, this is a universal truth, right? That when, you know, when people say like, when they lie, they almost feel like they're in a prison. And when they say the truth, the consequences might be heavy, but they feel internally free. Because there's this heart within us that is designed to prioritize truth, to seek truth, to long for truth, to ultimately, why? Lead to Allah, the al-haq, the ultimate truth. And so we have this mechanism, we have this um, navigation system within us that recognizes, that is supposed to recognize when we witness truth and when we witness that something that is not, that's not truthful, that does not serve us. Now, how do we take care? How do we make sure that we do recognize the difference? We take care of this heart because this heart is the navigation system. If we don't take care of it, its ability to see truth and falsehood is going to be altered. And so this path is this path of you know walking towards god is about seeking knowledge taking care of this heart so that you are able as you're seeking knowledge you're able to differentiate between what is in line with allah what is in line with al-haq what is true and what is not and there and so there there's this emphasis that we have to always remember that my priority is truth my priority is to follow truth, to live in truth, to align myself with God's truth, and to return to him in truth. And so, you know, when we understand that that's how powerful truth is, that it liberates, that it frees, that it, um, it helps, it, it's a form of guidance, that it helps me not, you know, waste my resources and my energy chasing that which is not real, you know, because 
think about this. If you are not connected to truth, you chase that which is not real. You don't really get anything from it, but you lose. It's a great loss. It's a, that's why, you know, subhanAllah, when, um, you know, in Surah Al-Asr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, verily man is in loss, right? You know, why? Because, because it is a great loss to spend your energy, your time, your resources, investing in a path that you think is going to bring you something. And in the end, you realize you have nothing at the destination and you spend your whole way there wasting your resources, wasting your energy. You didn't get anything from the path and you didn't get anything from the destination. It's like a person in a desert chasing a mirage. You, you think you have water there. You think it's going to give you something. And you spend your energy, your sweat, your time, your, your, you invested so much in running, fixating on that destination. You get there and it's false. It has nothing to offer you. This is what shaitan wants for us on this path. He wants to make falsehood appear beautiful, appear like it has water for you. It's going to quench your thirst, but it won't. And when you get there, it's the greatest loss because you realize you used your whole world chasing this whole path, chasing that which is false, and then arriving and getting nothing from that destination either. But what does Allah want for us? Know the truth, live in truth, so that you could benefit from the truth on the path and you don't waste your resources and your energy and your time, your mental and emotional energy, you know, your physical energy, your spiritual energy on things that have nothing to offer you and benefit and reap the fruits and the benefits of living in that truth, the spiritual, the mental, the emotional, the physical benefits of being in line with God's truth. And, and so reap the benefits of the path, but also arrive at your destination and reap the rewards of living in that truth, which are greater the rewards in the akhirah, inshallah, and hereafter. So I just wanted to start out emphasizing how important how important truth is. And so, you know, when we say, you know, many of us are programmed to say, when, we're, when someone asks us, what are you thankful for? We say, we're thankful for Islam. But many of us don't really understand what it means when we say that. You know, when we say, I'm thankful for Islam, you know, a lot of times I, I, I that's why I say that, that box thing or that people think of Islam as like this entity, something that they, that they just have, right? But in reality, it's, it's, I'm thankful for truth. <laughs> I'm thankful for having the truth. And this is a blessing because many people chase that truth. I've worked for many years with people who have no spiritual guidance, you know, people who were not taught anything about God. And I, I remember many times walking out of those sessions thinking, I'm just so grateful for, to have Islam. Because there are people dying for that guidance, dying. And don't be deluded by, okay, well, there's so many uh, people who don't have Islam and they seem happy and they're fine. Don't, don't let shaitan make you believe in these, um, like it's, you know, these pick, he makes, he makes not following Allah's path look appealing. But in reality, I've worked with so many people who have never been taught about God never been taught about their path, never been taught about what's to come in the hereafter. And even though they might look like they're having fun, they're thinking about these things because it's part of us. And they don't have those answers. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent guidance to all of mankind from the beginning to the end. And it's up to us to make sure that we see the immense value in that and in applying that in our lives. We should feel lucky that we are Muslim. People who are Muslim is, is, is one who submits to God's truths. That's what a Muslim is. You know, a Muslim is one who submits to what? To God's truths. Prioritizes God's truths over all anything else that the world or anybody else feeds you, right? And so as a Muslim, I'm grateful that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed me to understand and connect to his truth gave me a, a truthful way to live this world so that I do, not, I do not waste my time and energy and resources and harm myself on the path and in the end because Allah wants goodness for us. So now we understand that the priority is truth. And as Muslims, our priority should always be truth. 